Hello friends and welcome back to another video. So it's been quite a long time since I last filmed a video um, but as you can see I've been doing a lot of painting. I've just taken a break just to you know do what I like. I've been reading a lot more. I've been painting a lot more. I've been experimenting with different mediums. I've also learned something cool that I'm going to be doing in this video and this is going to be a two-part video but I'm going to be making paint. I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own paint from rocks, specifically pigment rocks. So I have two little jars here. These are the first pigments that I've tried and I wanted to try it out before I even filmed a video to show you the process but I have a brownish pigment here. And then this is a white pigment that I got from limestone that I have on my farm. But today I'm going to be doing a new color pigment because I was on a run yesterday and I came across some lava rocks. And it was like some pieces were like left behind but I picked up some rocks. I'm like that would be amazing for a pigment and it's like a nice, nice red. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to be showing you how you can get your pigment rocks or any rocks. Well, it would have to be a specific kind of rock but how to turn those rocks into pigments so that you can then later turn them into pigment sticks or watercolor. Sometimes paint can be super expensive. It doesn't have to be. And I feel like it's so much more satisfying making your own paints. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you the supplies we're going to be needing. You're going to need some rocks. Now, specifically pigment rocks or any rock that's really crumbly, usually you can test it by getting a rock. And if it's kind of wet, if you rub it onto something like a stick or another rock and it colors off, then that's a really good pigment rock to use to make paint. But I didn't try that with this, but it was very crumbly. So that's what I'm going to be using. You're going to need some jars of water. This is for a litigation process. We're going to need a strainer to kind of separate the paint from like any plant particles or any de debris that comes with the rock. We're going to use mortar and pestle. This is what we're going to use to grind up the rocks to get into a powder form. We're going to use a hammer to break up the rock. And I just use this to kind of smash the rocks and then transfer it onto paper and then put it in here. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna be getting my rock and putting it inside this shirt because I'm gonna be using a hammer to break up the pieces and then I'm gonna put it onto the, the piece of paper so we can transfer it to our mortar and pestle. So we're just gonna get a rock and you wanna be careful with this step, but we're gonna just break it apart. And as you can see, they're starting to break apart, which is exactly what we want. And at this point, we can keep crushing it a little more if we want um, to get smaller pieces so it's easier to grind. But you can start putting these little pieces inside your mortar and pestle. Now, very important to remember that whenever you're working with the rocks and kind of grinding it up, you definitely want to wear a mask because you want to prevent breathing in any of the dust. So definitely wear a mask. I didn't get one. So I'm kind of using my shirt to cover my nose. So. Okay, so we have all the pieces we're going to be using. So we're going to be going to grind this up now to get a powder dust. Um, so you can do this many ways. This table is a bit shaky, but you can either hit it like this or start moving it around like this until you get most of the pieces broken down very well and into like a powdery form. Okay, so our next step is to get our pigment that we've already crushed up and we're gonna be trying to get separate the bigger pieces from the powder parts and we're gonna do that with a strainer and I'm gonna be putting that into a jar of water because this is gonna be our litigation process. So first, let's just put all of this. You wanna be very careful. Make sure you get it all in there. And I'm just gonna get a brush to kind of Move, move it around or you can kind of do this. Okay, so we can get rid of this. I like to put this just in my plants, <laughs> like on the soil, so. So now that we have this in our jar of water, we're gonna wanna mix it up and this is our litigation process. So what's gonna happen now is that the lighter particles of the pigment is gonna stay at the top and the heavier material, like any plant material, any debris is gonna go to the bottom. So I don't know if you can see this very well, but we're just gonna leave this for like a minute or two while this separates. So the water at the top, that's what we're gonna want. So anything that's left at the bottom, we're gonna leave behind. I like to put that into my soil or whatever if you have I don't, I don't know what you want to use it for, but we're just going to leave that there while it separates a bit. 
And for this step, when we go ahead and separate the water into our other empty jar, I like to use this strainer, which is like fine mesh. So what this does is whatever water we're, we're separating from the top, any leftover plant material or anything that was left above um, will just get, you know, caught in this. So that's why I really like this mesh. So I'll put any supplies that I used in this video down in the description below if you guys want to check it out. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to be using. So I don't know if you can still tell, but any... Uh, you can like kind of see a layer at the bottom here that's what's getting separated usually you can just leave this for like a couple minutes and that should be good enough so now we're just going to go ahead and get the jar of water and start separating it you want to make sure it get, goes in the jar so you want to make sure that you don't pour out whatever's all the way all the heavy material at the bottom in the first jar so we're going to be very careful, make sure to do it slowly. And there you can see all the leftover plant material, leftover debris that was left at that top layer. And then in our first jar, this is all the leftover, the heavier um, parts of the pigment that we don't want. So now I like to do this litigation process like two or three times just to really um, get the finer materials and, and get rid of any of the small debris pieces. So we're gonna do that like two more times. I forgot to let you know that we're also gonna be needing a coffee filter because this is our last step. We've already separated all of the debris. We have clean water. So now we're going to be filtering it through this coffee filter and as the water dries up and evaporates or drips all the way, all the pigment is gonna be left behind and that's gonna dry up and that's our pigment. Okay, so we're gonna be getting this bowl and I just use a bowl because as this is filtering through, the whole filter kind of gets like soaking wet and starts to drip. So to prevent from any desk or table getting getting all wet and stuff, I'm just putting that in there. So we're gonna be putting our filter into our empty jar and I'm also gonna be pouring it, we're gonna now pour this in the filter, but I also like to just put it through this strainer just to pick up any leftover debris that there might be left behind. Now, I want to start this as a series. I thought it would be so fun, like being on the hunt for, for pigment rocks. It's so, so fun. And I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of seeing a bunch of videos of people making pigment sticks or oil paints or watercolors. And yeah, it may be easier to go out to the store, the craft store and buy paints, and, and it is. Um, it can also be expensive sometimes, but I, creating art doesn't have to be expensive hobby. Um, some people will say, you know, oh, I don't have money to do all this, but it doesn't have to be expensive. You can even go to Walmart, get those 50 cent paints if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be an expensive thing to do. It shouldn't keep you from doing that. Um, but also it's the whole process of making paint, going out and, and finding a rock that is showing color and getting so excited that, oh, you, you can take this rock home and make paint. And I only have three colors because I've only found three rocks that give me a uh, um, color but it's it's also the process of it which I just enjoy so much and the slow living and I want to do more of slow living doing things on my own making things by hand it's the process is what's so enjoyable for me and very meditative which is why I want to do this video and show you oh you can go out and have fun just getting the rocks and seeing what the paint looks like at the end on paper and it's not even about oh what the paint is gonna be like on on paper it's more of the process like I said so that is just what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this as a series. I thought it'd be so fun making pigment sticks and watercolor and finding um, rocks, cool rocks. So yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more of these videos. I'm, I'm going to make them anyways, but um, let me know if you tried this video. But yeah, I'm just waiting for this to filter through all of it. And then I'm going to show you what the dried pigment looks like at the end. So yeah, while that's filtering through, I'm just going to sit here and just read my book and just enjoy this nice breeze there is today and just listening to the birds and then just letting the rocks of earth just unfold and give me pigments to then use as paint for my art it really is magical
also an update on the paint. It's almost all evaporated away. The water, there's still a little bit of water left, but you can see the pigment at the bottom. Let me see if this can focus more. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more pigment than I thought. I thought there wasn't going to be a lot. I thought that the piece of rock that I used was just too small. Or maybe I didn't get enough, like, um, I didn't break it down enough. But it looks like I'm going to have quite a bit of pigment. So I'm super, super excited to see what this looks like once it's dry. All right. So this has pretty much almost all evaporated. So we're just going to, it, it pretty much did. All the water is gone now. So I'm just going to be getting the filter and putting it on top of this paper and i'm just going to put this here and have it open so that it can completely dry and yes it looks like very little pigment and that's totally fine i used just a little piece of a rock and i didn't even use the entire rock so that's why i have very little but that's totally fine because this will go a long way with when we make the watercolor in the next video so i'm going to let this dry once it does i'll be back here and we'll put it in the jar and store it okay so now we have our pigment and it is fully dry now it looks like very little that's because it is but this should be quite enough for what the paint we're going to be doing in the next video um so i'm just i'm actually going to be making extra after i finish filming this but i'm going to get this and put it into one of our jars so i'm going to be getting this little cardboard piece and i'm going to create kind of like a little funnel i'm going to be getting my empty jar here i get these from amazon so i'll leave that link down below so I'm just going to stick that in there and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to fold this here and pour it all into the funnel. And we have all of our pigment there. So yes, it looks like a lot of work for very little um, return. But again, I only used a little piece of the rock. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a lot more of it. I'm going to use the rest of the rock. So I'll show you what it looks like um, after I finish. Okay, you guys. So I already finished making another batch. This one has a lot more pigment. So I'm going to put this into my jar and this should be good for what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Good morning everybody so it is currently the next day so the last thing that you saw was me doing my second batch of the pigment which I showed you was a little more than the first one and I was able to get a little bit more and so I think this is a good amount for what I'm going to be doing for my next video which is making watercolors so I'm super super excited about that but here I have my three different pigments I have a yellow clay soil pigment I have the lava rock pigment and the limestone one so I have these three. I'm so excited and I'm excited about this journey that I'll be doing this new, um, what would you call it? This new series where I make pigments from rocks. So I'm super, super psyched about that. But I'm going to be ending the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys went out and tried this activity yourself. It's super, super easy. And there's something just more satisfying about making your own pigments and then creating a painting out of the paint that you created by just going outside and finding rocks, you know? And the fun thing is, is that each little bottle that you have, each pigment that you create, each has its own story. Each has um, a place and time of when you got it, when you found it, what happened. So that's what's really exciting about it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in part two. Bye guys.